On April 11, 2016, a man by the name of Mark Meachin, known online as Count Dankula, uploaded a video to YouTube entitled, Mate, Your Doug's a Nazi. On April 28, 2016, he was arrested by Scottish police. According to a spokesperson, a 28-year-old man was arrested in relation to the alleged publication of offensive material online an improper use of electronic communications under the Communications Act of 2003. At last, on March 20th of 2018, Mark Meachin, Count Dankula, was found guilty, convicted, and on April 23rd was sentenced to pay a fine of 800 pounds. For an arrest, a two-year trial, and a conviction to result from a YouTube video certainly does raise the following question. What was the content and the nature of the video in question? My girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. And so I thought I would turn them into the least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. Jews. It's time to get up now, Buddha. It's time to get up. Do I gas the Jews? Sieg heil! Sieg heil! Sieg heil! Sieg heil! Who's a good wee Nazi? Do I gas the juice? Do I gas the juice? Come on, gas the juice! Come on, gas the juice, son! Come on! I'm not racist, by the way. I just really, really wanted to piss her off. Jews. To some, it may appear as though this video was a mere attempt at humor. So what was the argument made against this video at Mr. Meachin's trial? Sheriff Derek O'Carroll, the judge who found Meachin guilty, argued that Meachin sent, by means of a public electronic communications network, a message or other matter that is grossly offensive or of an indecent, obscene, or menacing character. He also stated what is effectively the thesis of the argument against Major Doug's a Nazi. In my view, it is a reasonable conclusion that the video is grossly offensive. So, what's the counter-argument? Well, Mr. Meachin claimed in court, just as he did in the video, that his intent was exclusively to annoy his girlfriend, and that he only anticipated the video to be seen by seven of his friends. But Sheriff O'Carroll simply did not believe that claim. Which is, among other things, convenient, seeing as the purpose of a trial is to prove guilt, not to just decided. But as Sheriff O'Carroll stated, quote, it is self-evident that the material is anti-Semitic and quote, the video is anti-Semitic and racist in nature. In the interest of not assuming that the meaning of self-evident is self-evident, the definition is evident without proof or reasoning, not needing to be demonstrated or explained. Obvious, clear, plain, patent, axiomatic, undeniable. It's a strange term to be used by a judge because, again, in a court of law where the defendant's guilt must be proven, the notion of a defendant's guilt being evident without proof would seem to undermine the very purpose of a trial. But it isn't really worth getting hung up on. This is a very easy claim to debunk. All you need to do is cite the simple fact that the nature of this video has been debated. The video got shared three million times on YouTube with lots of inane comments like LOL underneath. Okay, so clearly some people found it funny. What's that tell you? The, the comedy from it is the extremism of it. The ridiculousness. He sets up the premise of this dog is so perfect and adorable and my girlfriend loves it, so I'm going to make it the worst thing ever, a Nazi. To me, the video and joke is anti-Nazi, not anti-Semitic. And the people that think that like anybody who would do that is a Nazi, you're not correct. That's not true. I guarantee you that guy's not a Nazi. I think. I don't know. I'm assuming he's not a Nazi. I'm assuming he's a shit poster. He's a guy who's trying to be funny. I learned that YouTube actually defended my video. I'll need to double check that, but apparently they says, okay then, it is a tasteless joke, but the video is clearly comedic in nature. 
That's what they said themselves, even though they personally didn't like it. Find me one neo-Nazi who is using that YouTube clip as a recruiting tool. It's a pug mimicking their glorious leader. So yes, it is offensive if you're a fucking Nazi. And the explanation of the decision, it sounds like he was found guilty because the guy didn't get the joke. It was a fucking joke, you c- Evidently, not everyone agrees on the nature of this video. So if anything is self-evident, it's that the nature of this video is not self-evident. Otherwise, there would be no debate in the first place. Regarding said debate, the argument made from the other side is that this video was meant, and only meant, to be a joke. The reason why this dog was trained to respond to Nazi rhetoric is because Nazis are one of the most familiar taboos in society. So let's ask the following question. Question. Does that make sense? Is it possible to depict Adolf Hitler, Nazis, Nazi imagery, and Nazi rhetoric without endorsing any of it, but merely employing it for the sake of comedy? Hmm. Amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But under the right circumstances, a producer could make more money with a flop than he could with a hit. A good example of this can be found in the 1967 comedy, The Producers. In a desperate fraud scheme, a washed-up Broadway producer and his nervous accountant deliberately attempt to put the worst possible production on the stage. In their search for the worst play that they can find, they elect to produce a musical entitled Springtime for Hitler, a gay romp with Adolf and Eva at Berchtesgarten. Wow. Wow. The expectation is that the grossly offensive play will be a surefire flop and close on opening night. But the audience misinterprets it as a satire, resulting in springtime for Hitler becoming an inadvertent commercial success. Basically, the exact opposite fate of Count Ankula's Major Dugs and Nazi. The Producers was a hit itself, becoming one of the most acclaimed comedies of all time, eventually being selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. And short of its Jewish writer slash director being arrested and convicted of making an anti-Semitic film, he was honored with an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. So we know that it's possible to depict Nazis, particularly Adolf Hitler, in a context which is comedic, satirical, what have you. So the question now becomes, was Mate Your Dugs a Nazi produced in that same context? It's important that we get this part right because, obviously, just because something contains anti-Semitic content does not automatically render it anti-Semitic. A World War II documentary, for example, will surely contain anti-Semitic content. It does not render the documentary anti-Semitic. So with that, let's analyze the premise of this video. The premise of this video was to sabotage, so to speak, the cuteness of a cute pet, and this called for an ironic juxtaposition. A juxtaposition, according to Vocabulary.com, is any time unlike things bump up against each other, and defines it as the act of positioning close together. It is often used for the purpose of depicting irony, humor, or sadness. This was the reason why this self-evidently cute animal was trained to respond to a phrase universally accepted to be let's just say the opposite of cute. One important thing worth noting here is that Mr. Meachin didn't have to invoke a genocide to pull this off. Theoretically, he could have picked one of many phrases. Steal money, do drugs, punch women, eat babies, burn houses, bomb schools, shoot police, hijack airplanes, put the lotion in the basket. It was not necessary that the phrase be gas the Jews. It just had to be a taboo phrase, just like in the producers. The musical meant to flop did not have to be about Nazis. It just had to be about something that was taboo. This simple fact dramatically undermines the claim that this video was anti-Semitic in nature. In order for something to be anti-Semitic in nature, it would require an anti-Semitic premise. Mein Kampf is anti-Semitic in nature. You cannot alter or replace references to the Jews without changing the premise of the book. By contrast, if Mark Meachin had trained his girlfriend's pug to respond to any of these other phrases, the premise of the video would remain the same, because the premise simply called for an ironic juxtaposition, a cute pug responding to something that is not cute. 
If the anti-Semitic content in this video could be replaced without changing the premise of the video, then the video is not anti-Semitic in nature. It obviously contains anti-Semitic content, but so does a World War II documentary, and so does the producers, and so does the Smithsonian Institution. None of these things are anti-Semitic in nature because of the context in which the anti-Semitic content exists. It simply would not make sense to walk into a museum, see a Nazi flag, and be offended. And that would seem to bring us back to the central thesis, that this video is grossly offensive. This, after all, was the crux of the argument against Meechan, as he was found guilty not necessarily of being an anti-Semite, but of publishing material online which was grossly offensive. This is an exceptionally slippery thesis because offense defined as annoyance or resentment brought about by a perceived insult to or disregard for oneself or one's standards or principles is subjective. What offends one person may not offend another. No doubt this video is grossly offensive in the opinion of a lot of people. But just the same, there are many other people who find it grossly offensive that the guy who made it was arrested, tried, and convicted. Which brings us to an impasse for which there are only two logical ways around. Either Sheriff Derek O'Carroll be arrested, tried, and convicted for his grossly offensive verdict? or the law be changed so that gross offense is no longer an offense. Any other course of action would not be logically consistent. For the entire day of my trial, the prosecution tried their hardest to find the evidence of me being a Nazi, a racist, or a white supremacist, and in the end, they found absolutely nothing. <laughs> no evidence whatsoever of me being a racist or a white supremacist was submitted by the prosecution, because absolutely none existed. I reject any notion of superiority or inferiority based on race. I reject the idea of an ethno state. If you want to live here in peace and not only respect the freedom of others, but fight to protect the freedom of others, then you are welcome in this country. I reject Nazism and any other form of far-right ideology because I have a deep, seething hatred for anything that even has a hint of authoritarianism and that goes for the far left too.